Nate Smith. Nate, I feel like any time that you and I talk, if like I text you or you text me or we send voice memos or videos, you send videos, which is weird, but still, <laughs> you're all you're always on the road. It's always a movie. You're it's never movie here. You. You're never in Nashville. I'm never in Nashville ever. Like ever. it's it's the greatest thing, and it's also you can also get extremely exhausted from it. But you know, what is a day on the road like now for you? Um, you know, I, I usually like hermit to my my bunk, pull the pr- pull the curtain, just shut the world out. It feels really good for a few hours. Um, or listen to these guys just laughing for hours and hours. Do you, you sleep know? late? I'm I'm the first one to bed, I think, because I'm the oldest guy in the group. So I'm the elder, and and so I just go right to bed. You act like you're 50. That's the thing. <laughs> <I feel> like, <laughs> when everybody else is 11, you really can't claim I'm the oldest guy. This is the youth group band. It's right like here. Kids Bob. It's yeah, it's Nate and Kids Bob, and he's like, well, I'm old, so I'm going to bed. <laughs> Nate and Kids Bob. Is it pretty cool to play these songs that people know now? <laughs> it's amazing. I mean, when you have it on uh, that, that Kids Bop album, they, I mean, that's a hit. That's how it you know is. it's a hit. You yeah, know? It's on that commercial. Yeah. It's like whiskey on you. You know, we gonna try. We never. So, it's amazing. It's amazing. Yeah, it's really great. Um, so I got a lot of stuff to talk to you about, but what I thought we would do, since um, your whole band's here, which is awesome, I'm very appreciative that you guys would all come in. You know, I know there are child labor laws, so you can only work so long in a day. <laughs> so, so now you have a new album that's out, and you know that was placed at song twelve. Now, why? Why would you put the big single like at twelve? Is it because it's already big and you don't really need to establish it? Was there a reason? Probably because they're like, hey, get the song order in. We need it in like two hours. And you're like, oh, God. Uh, so you just turn the song order and you're like, okay, cool. Got it. So that was really it? Probably what happened, yeah. The new album, I'm always fascinated with why people put songs at number one. If I could stop loving you is at number one. Now, there's yeah. got to be a reason you wanted to start the whole project with that song. Yeah, I, I really love that song a lot. And it just kind of feels like the soundscape and style of like me, you know? It's like heartfelt anthem, has a big like, you know fun chorus and stuff. It kind of just feels right. So I was like, I think this is the first song to kind of let people in to know kind of my style. You know, when I think about you, I, mean, I think about you a lot, but I think about you and your name, <laughs> Nate Smith. Did you ever think about not going by Smith because it's so common? Yes. Because yes. that's the first thing I, I was like, Nate is such a, he's a distinct voice. When you come in, like I enjoy you as a person. Everything about you is, is you know, slightly different and distinct in a positive way. But then it's like Nate Smith. Smith. Like, 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 <laughs> The most common name in the world, right? Why did you think possibly you should try a different name? Do you have a middle name? I do, Dean. So I was like, okay, Nathan Dean, that's okay. But there's Jackson Dean, you know. True. Uh, Nathaniel's my first name. I don't know. Is that too long? I don't know. I used to get embarrassed in class when they'd say my full name. Would you be in trouble and be Nathaniel? Yes. Yes. I have some I, some name ideas if you'd like them. <laughs> that I'd like to pitch to you now yes, to change your yeah, name. Let's yeah, let's talk. Let's talk. Uh, okay. See if any of these make sense. Okay. How about Nathan Smithio- Smithsonian? I like the Smithsonian. Nathan, a, that should be a version of you that you do, Nathan Smithsonian, Smithsonian. whenever you decide to do That's some, really strong. It is yeah. strong. It could be a side character, too. Yeah. You're like, Nathan Smithsonian, connoisseur of great American art. We'd like to do a song for... Think about that one. How about Lil Smithy? <laughs> Lil Smithy. Lil Smithy. Kind of feels like it's got a little edge to it, doesn't it? How about Honky Tonk Heartbreaker? I like that one. <laughs> Ooh, the double H. I like it. I like it. So, you know, it's tough to cut through. That's why my name, my real name's not Bones. It's not? You literally didn't know that? No. Yeah, my, my real name's Bobby. Yeah. But my wife goes by our real name, which is Estel. And so that's my real name. How did I not know this? Yeah, you, uh, you didn't do the research on me. Is he messing with me? Is he messing with me? No, I swear. No, it's real. Seriously. No, it's no, no, that's real. It's, it's my real Estel. name. Yeah. I didn't yeah. do my homework. And I really wasn't like, hey, everybody, here's my real ever. But then my wife was like, I'm not going by Bones. I'm not. And I was like, I get it. It's so cool. It's a stupid though. name. A cool well, idea. see, I feel like it's a pirate, but it is distinct. Did you feel piratey when you first. Yeah, I, I, well, I wore eye patches as a kid, so I'd already felt piratey because one of my eyes doesn't work. It was but a medical thing. I think you're still, because I was thinking about that early on, like even though Nate Smith, common name, I think you're starting to cut through in a different way, which is which is pretty cool and pretty big to say considering you're basically John Johnson. <laughs> you know? Pretty much, I'm John Doe for sure. It's it's easy to remember though, I guess at least you know. Do you have a nickname? Do, do you have that your band? When I was a kid, or? I created my own nickname. I was really slow, but I thought like I could be really fast at running and stuff. And uh, so I, I wanted to be called Speedy. I wanted everybody to call me Speedy, and I was the slowest kid in in the neighborhood. I was like, but you're gonna call me Speedy. For Speedy, sure. Speedy Smith. And yeah. <laughs> Did that increase your speed yeah, at all ever? No, no, oh, no. Okay, huh. It was like I was like trying to like like speak it into existence. You yeah. know, Speedy. So That's if you said it, you would become faster. But I didn't though. Were you an athlete? Oh, sure. No, I sucked at every sport. I tried. Why every would you sport. be called Speedy then? That would be like called. I want to call myself. Every sport I sucked at. Every, Mr. Every sports. One. But do you play anything? Nah. No, I, I just I, I tried every sport. Uh, wrestling. Uh, I remember when I I had the leotard thing on, and I remember I stood up and this girl looked at me. And she goes, "You just don't have an ass for that." And I'm like, "Oh, oh, oh 
How old were you though? I was traumatized. I was 14, and she was right. But like, I just like, it, like I was. It was traumatizing at the time. Yeah, uh, you're. Do you even f know where you are on the road at times? Like, do you ever forget because you're so exhausted? Uh, a little bit. Or do you write it? Uh, what I try to do is always write it in multiple places. So even if I'm at a different corner of the stage. That's a good idea. Yeah. On the front on the set list, it's easy. But every set list we put it on just in case I forget. Okay, that's a good idea. Well, I didn't admit that. Okay. But, you know, at times <laughs> you can be so tired, you just kind of forget where you are. When you do, where do you put the song? Where do you put Whiskey on You in your set list? We put it last. So uh, sometimes I'll just go like, D should we just skip the whole encore thing, everybody, and just play the song? And they're like, yeah. So I'm like, cool, no encore. Let's are you afraid it. if you played it first, people... Get, what about playing it twice? I'm a big advocate of you Did play... Did that happen once? Didn't we do it once? Well, even on... Even like acoustically at the beginning, like the second song, and then at the end you full band rock it out because people are there to. I know you That's got a new. Cool. I got to know you got a new album when you want to play all the new songs, obviously. But think about that. That's not. That's a bad giving idea. the people what they want. Garth Brooks doesn't play any new stuff. He doesn't. And you two are a lot alike. Okay. <laughs> here, here at Nate Smith Inc. Um, no, uh, just kidding. Uh, the new album is called Nate Smith. That's his name, Nate Smith. And there are twenty songs. There's a lot of songs here. Took me a while to get through it. There's a little Since surprise though, um, and uh, we have actually we're dropping uh, six extra songs the day of the album. So we're gonna just do the deluxe the same day and just go for it and have 26 out right away. Well, we're in a time machine, Nate, because I know we're recording this today, but this is airing after your album comes out. So yes. now just say we put six more out. <laughs> we put six more out. Hey! 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 We did it. Woo! We did it. We pulled the curtain back, and now our audience sees we're all idiots. <laughs> <laughs> Myself included. That's all right. There's my so, first day. I so really... there are 26 songs now. 26. Wow. And why, why, why do that all at once? Just. Well, there, there was a lot of demand for one of the songs on social. It's called World on Fire, and uh, they, they were going crazy. Like, it's actually become a joke. Like, I will be 90 years old by the time the song comes out. Like, all sorts of, like, funny memes and stuff. It's, it's been a whole thing. So I'm like, let's, let's just... So I went back to the label. I'm like, we got to do this. So. so why that song, though? Why do you think that resonated so much? I don't know. It's, it's got that similar energy that, like, Whiskey on You has, where it's, like, it's up-tempo. It's, it's kind of an anthem. It's a rocker. And people just connect to it, the honesty and the, the visceralness of the song. Do you guys play that one already? We just started live. Just started live, yeah. Is it good or no? You guys do it, it live. sucks. I mean, I don't yeah? <laughs> do you want to run a little bit of it, can you? If, if, you Drew's, know running, it? if Drew's running sound, it's, it's absolutely awful. Uh, Drew. They said that Drew's like the guy who wants to be made fun of all the time. Hey, Drew. Nice mustache. <laughs> I don't know, dude. I got nothing. I think you're a good-looking dude. They told me to make fun it's of so you. New, though. Dude, yeah, I think you're a great guy. I think you're doing a great job with sound. I think, like, you came in with a good attitude. I don't know why they want me to hate on you. But, so, I mean, you... Yeah, okay, good. We're He's all so good. confused. Yeah. We're all good, buddy. Nate, what's a live show of yours like? Like, is it energy? Is it... Is yeah. Yeah, it's energetic, but like it's like new songs people haven't heard. Um, it's emotional. It kind of feels like church at times. Like it goes down to emotional parts yeah. like that, and then it comes back up. And yeah, I was gonna ask about that because again, being a former worship leader, I bet there are a lot of things from that specific part of your life that translate wonderfully into being a live performer, especially just just music. For sure, for sure. I think it was definitely like perfect schooling to do this because you you learn how to put set lists together. You got to use these funny little ear things that we listen to and, and just overall emotion and stuff. I think it's important. And it's, you got to keep people's attention, right? Yeah. I mean, as a worship leader, you're sometimes you use music, sometimes you're using words, sometimes you you're, you're have energy, sometimes you're, you don't have energy purposefully. Yeah. And how all the nuance of all of that works together, I imagine that would be a pretty good path to a, being a big live performer. Yeah, and you're you're leading people. Like you're when you're singing a song, you're you're not just singing it up here. You're like you're leading them, kind of. So it kind of feels like worship leading in a different way. You are a great <laughs> songwriter, and you wrote over half of the songs on the record. Yeah. But being such a good songwriter, I'll, I can always appreciate when you take other songs from other people as well, because it's just kind of like an homage to the art. Because you know how hard it is yourself. Yeah. How did you the songs that you didn't write? Like, what about them made you go, "Oh, this is one of the ones we want to cut"? Because I'm assuming you had hundreds sent to you. Yeah, um, I'm always looking for songs constantly. I'm, when someone sends me a song, I'm like, send me your whole folder, and I'll just I'll go through all of them, you know. Um, but I just felt like either something in my life connected with it, um, or it just felt right for me sonically and stuff like that. But mostly, just like there's something special about it that I was like, that's that's it. I want to play Better Boy because this is one of the ones yeah. that was sent to you and that I like. So tell me about this song and why you chose this one. Uh, Taylor Phillips sent it over to me, a songwriter here in town. Um, he wrote it with Hardy. And uh, they sent me a like a, a little voice memo, and I listened to it. And it was just a you, it was just one of those things. It was as raw as it gets, and I listened through it once, and I was like, "This is it." I don't know. I just knew. 
I don't feel like you're super derivative of anybody else, but I always like to find like vocally or like maybe not even influences, but kind of who you remind me of. And it's a little bit of Lee Bryce, not a lot, but a little bit of Lee Bryce and a little bit of like Seven Mary Three. Remember the song Cumbersome? Oh, wow. Okay. It's, it's like a grit. It's like an alternative. You have like an yeah. alternative but pure country sound that I don't really feel like anybody else in Nashville has. And that's a really weird reference of, of Seven Mary Three, a band from the 90s. Yeah. But there's like, a, there's like a gravel tone that is still sincere and country in that. And when I say that, do you want to punch me or hug me? I want to hug you. I want Thank to kiss you. you. Thank uh, you. Thank it you. means a lot. Because I think that's the big thing is like... I, you just got to be yourself, whatever that is. And if it works, it works. If it doesn't, it doesn't. But just, you know, just be yourself. You're opening on the Home Team Tour 23 with Thomas Rhett and Cole Swindell. So you haven't started that, though, yet, right? It starts May? in May, yeah. yeah. Do you know those dudes at all? Um, both I'm, bad dudes. I'm just going to let you know right now. Yeah, bad dudes. Yeah, Stay bad away. dudes. Stay away from them. They're both trouble. They're bad. <laughs> no, it's like two of the best dudes in country music, <laughs> like, to be on tour with. And so that's super exciting for you to do that. You met Cole where? Um, I met him at Critters one time. What is that? The play, the critters at the uh, uh, at the graduate, the downstairs little area where the, it gets you, wild. Mr. Cool there. guy. There's like Chuck E. Cheese characters, and they're like they're Stop everybody's it. drunk. Yeah. What is critter? Is it a bar? It's a, it's a little bar. Yeah. Oh, look at you! You hanging out at the bars like <laughs> hey, you know, cool guys yeah, now? Yeah, you know, hanging out with the other country stars. Are? A little steam, you know what I mean? Dang, right? Okay. <laughs> Nate Smith. Uh, the album is Nate Smith, uh, as I like to call you, Nathan Smithsonian. <laughs> That's my, my friend Nathan want, Smithsonian. Yeah. You guys check out the album. It is Nate's such. Uh, talented performer but he's also somebody who's worked very hard to, to, to be here and I don't want those two to be confused and man you just it, there's just so much emotion and country in this this record and that's what I felt when I was listening to it like what that song does right there you do that over and over again in this record so congratulations on on a release of the record and the bonus but if it all came out at the same time it's actually just the record yeah yeah but you did the bonus on record day yes just surprise yeah we should talk about that we have a strategy session after this for next time you do an album <laughs> You know, wait a week or so, you know. <laughs> I just say it out loud. Yeah, yeah. What, what, what is he talking about? You know. Uh, Nate, congratulations on a great record, buddy. Dude, thank you the so much. The two week number one, which we haven't really talked to you in person since then. Whiskey on you just cr- for two weeks. That almost that's so such a rare thing yeah. for a new artist to do. So, like the biggest compliments to you and your team, and just keep hustling, man. Keep hustling. Stay healthy. Uh, keep the mustache. <laughs> you know uh, you guys great job the whole band today Nate congratulations Dude, love you man and really appreciate all the support guys on the show and everything it means the world to me and really everybody does. check out Nate Smith the person and the record both <laughs> and if you were to name the bonus record you would name it what Nathan Smithsonian <laughs> I guess so Nathan Smithsonian, Smithsonian that's right yeah, yeah. there he is alright Nate Smith everybody oh, you gotta you follow man. him Nate Smith on Instagram it's a-